you know every tech reviewer's pet peeve has to be the fact that they cannot capture on video whenever they notice a software bug on the phone that they are testing but i think i got really lucky today i had a different intro written for this particular video but then the nothing phone one showed up with a bug basically you can see that it's on this blank screen right now and if i have to exit this screen i can't even like do anything like it's it's stuck over here and uh, all i can do is sort of pull down the notification slider that's about it that's all i can do now if i have to get out of this mode what i need to do is put the phone the phone's display on lock and then unlock it to see my home screen so basically that was a glimpse of what you're going to be seeing in this video and considering the phone has been so hyped so much so that Karan Johar had a crazy party for Carl Pay and the investors of nothing where the who's who of Bollywood were there now that's the kind of hype that this phone's been generating but I really want to cut through the hype for this video. It's our review one month later of the Nothing Phone One. And you know what? For this video, in our typical style, I'm not going to go into the details, but I'm going to be talking about the long term, like, you know, real world usage experience of using a phone for one month. This has happened after a long time, so I'm really excited for this one. And if you don't know me yet, I'm Ershad. You're watching Trackita English. Let's begin. One of the things that I noticed in my long-term usage is that it continues to be a beautiful and attractive phone in its price category. In fact, I feel that it actually punches above its weight when it comes to the design of the phone. That whole transparent design and, and available in that white and black color definitely makes it stand apart. But what's more important is the build quality and I dropped it once and it sort of had a paint chip on the mid-frame, the aluminum mid-frame. But apart from that, it's held up fairly well. I expected the glass to shatter because it fell flat on a very very rough uh, you know ground surface and it didn't so that's definitely a good thing regardless you should use a case with the phone definitely not the nothing phone one's official case because it's too expensive and it yellows really soon now what about the fancy glyph lighting feature that you get with the nothing phone one honestly i stopped caring about it once i started using the phone as a tool as an everyday functional device i genuinely didn't use the glyph for notifications i do like the ringtones and the way they sound so that's a good thing but I've been using my phone forever in silent mode because that's how I generally get work done and that's how it's been uh, all along. Therefore, these, you know, fancy things definitely didn't make, uh, you know, a change in my life or in my experience. In fact, one of the times I showed it to a friend, he found it to be distracting and he felt that, you know, it might not be fun to use within an office setting or, uh, you know, when you're in a theater and it's entirely dark and this could actually be distracting for people who are trying to concentrate on something. Regardless, it does look good, but then gets lost when you start using the phone as a regular functional device where you're, you know, doom scrolling on Instagram, making calls, sending messages and, uh, you know, watching videos and of course playing games on the phone. That completely goes away because you're using the display for the most of the time and you don't really look at the back. Now, talking about gaming and playing Apex Legends, that's the only game that I play a lot on any mobile device that I test. And the Snapdragon 778G Plus for a super mid-range chip has held up really well. The performance is really good. Even with extreme graphics and ultra frame rates, it doesn't get hot whatsoever. It just runs slightly warm and that's not really a problem at all. Apart from that, it maintains pretty stable frame rates. Of course, you won't get that 8 series level of graphics fidelity with the Nothing Phone 1, but 778 G plus is good enough for the kind of games that I play. Now, if you are playing Genshin Impact or something, then you would definitely need more performance on tap. But the problem starts when we start talking about software optimization and updates. Now, with the first couple of updates, I didn't face any problem whatsoever. That was the update version 1.0.2 and 1.1.0. Both were really good, so much so that my experience with the phone was so good that I mentioned that it's a bug-free device as well in my review. But then 1.1.2 two dropped and changed things around. Of course, if you watched Ranjit's review of the Nothing Phone 1, you would know, uh, you know, that he's also highlighted an issue with that specific update. But I'm going to go into detail of all the problems that I faced with the phone after the 1.1.2 update. And you know what? It's really annoying when an update cripples a device because then it renders all my previous observations wrong. And that really annoys me to no end. Which is why it's a very important video and you must share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do that as well. We'd really appreciate appreciate your, uh, you know, subscription. Now, let me break down all the problems that I faced with version 1.1.2. The very first problem that I faced is the battery life has taken a really, really bad hit. You know, in my review, I'd mentioned that the Nothing Phone 1 gave me about seven to eight hours of screen on time. That was with the 1.1.0 update. With 1.1.2, the battery life has now dropped 
two, you won't believe it. Four and a half hours of screen on time. This is the same usage I'm talking about. My usage is very similar across all devices. So yeah, that's a huge drop. In fact, on one occasion, I got only about three hours and seven minutes of screen on time. That's just crazy. I don't understand why that was happening. And I think that's also because the standby drain has become too much. I don't know what's happened with the optimization of the battery life. The battery life has definitely taken a hit on the Nothing Phone 1. It's not the kind of battery life experience that I had with the first few updates. This is not looking good. Now, apart from the battery life drain, the bugs in the software are really, really annoying. The first one, of course, I showcased at the start of the video where the screen would go blank and you can't really do much. You'll have to switch off the display and switch it on again to sort of see the home screen. The second thing I noticed constantly, and I've taken a screenshot of it as well, is that the back gesture, once I'm done with the gesture as well, it would persistently stay on screen and it wouldn't go even when you're you know, switching screens, which is completely completely odd. Now, these are definitely the two bugs that are most irritating. But apart from that, it's also been slightly stuttery in overall performance, which wasn't the case when with the 1.1.0 update. Now, you must be saying, hey, Arsha, that's a problem with Android 12 in general. And you are not entirely off track. But the point here is that this is in context to my usage of the Nothing Phone 1 over the month and with version 1.1.0 and 1.1.2. So 1.1.2 has added these problems. They didn't exist before. Honestly, it shouldn't be this way and nothing has to issue an update update soon to fix these problems and hopefully they will considering the fact that they have been pushing out updates and I want to hold out on hope because otherwise the software experience on this phone is genuinely great. Now if you're a nothing phone one user and if you haven't updated it already I would suggest that don't go and update it and if you're planning on buying the phone then stick to the version 1.1.0 don't don't jump to version 1.1.2 it's just the 38 MB update and you can really skip this one and move to the next one hopefully that will fix all the problems that we're mentioning in this video. Although that's what it takes when you you have to back a new smartphone brand there is a bit of leap of faith involved in here for sure otherwise i'm sure that most users like the nothing os for the fact that it is a clean operating system and it is genuinely good to use when it's not this buggy but there's yeah, some useful features like dual apps uh, are missing i think that nothing can add a few features in the future but for now it's still pretty good that stock android experience is damn nice and the fact that you don't get bloatware with it is definitely a huge advantage after the initial bout of quality control issues with the way uh, the transparent phone looked and the problems that was there in the way the you know glyph lighting was placed and the fact that there was a condensation issue all of those things after the initial uh, round of problems those didn't crop up again but what has consistently stayed a problem is the fact that a lot of folks are facing the green tint and black crush issue fortunately that problem doesn't exist on both of our units the white one and the black one but that's genuinely a concern but that's also genuinely a concern for many mid-range phones with mid-range panels mid-range OLED panels because the kind of quality that ch uh, check and assurance that happens for these mid-range phones uh, and these mid-range OLED panels is not that good. Now talking about the display, the display experience has been pretty good uh, and of course the audio experience has complemented it really well as well except for the speaker which could have been better but you know through the earphones, uh, through truly wireless earbuds and through wired earphones the performance has been really really good. But yes I noticed that somebody mentioned that the peak brightness in you know regular usage is just 500 nits. We did mention that very clearly early on in our videos as well and that doesn't seem to be a problem at least where I am staying which is in Pune where it has been raining continuously and there's not too much sunlight out here here to cause a problem but I'm pretty certain that across India where it gets really really hot and there's a harsh sun uh, then definitely it will be a concern 500 nits is definitely not flagship grade that's one area where nothing has you know taken down uh, you know the experience a little bit now, talking about the camera experience, it's pretty decent if you ask me. I like the kind of pictures that you can get with the Nothing Phone 1. That 50 plus 50 setup is also a very pragmatic setup because that ultrawide also doubles up as a macro camera. The kind of pictures that you can get with it is good. And an update also fixed one of the HDR issues that I had with the phone. Not fixed it to an entire extent, but the HDR performance is definitely better compared to what it was earlier. However, camera is always a work in progress and this is Nothing's very first phone, so hopefully uh, we'll see better camera phones in the future from the brand itself. Now, I know that a lot of tech nerds love Gcam and they want to use Gcam with their Nothing Phone 1. I did try out Gcam and you know what? In many situations where HDR didn't fire, the kind of pictures that I got with Gcam and the stock camera were almost similar looking. But where Gcam helps is when you're taking pictures of people or if you're taking HDR shots where it's very, very good. But you know what? Gcam doesn't really add to the sharpness of the 50 megapixel sensor. In fact, the stock camera 
Canada itself does good enough sharpening. So yeah, so that's something that you guys need to note. Also in the Gcam build that I used, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but the ultra wide angle camera is not available. So I expected that ultra wide camera to be available in the Gcam build because the ultra wide angle camera is the one that definitely requires a lot of improvement on the Nothing Phone one. It's not really sharp and the kind of pictures that you get with it are not very attractive. Unfortunately, you cannot use Gcam for the ultra wide angle camera, at least right now. But if there is a new Gcam build that lets you do that, let me know in the comment section below. So I've got Sajid with me because I've been talking to the audience about my experience with the Nothing Phone 1 after exactly a month. You've also been using the phone for a month. I've said that, you know, it updates have sort of crippled the device. Has your experience been the same? Absolutely. Uh, the updates definitely have crippled the Nothing Phone 1. So be it battery, be it uh, the new bugs. Uh, so uh, we received like two or three updates uh, yes. in, in, in three to four weeks. And uh, the first uh, two updates were like, okay, the device is getting better. Mm. The Nothing team is uh, listening to feedback. They are adding some new features. But after third or fourth update, the the ship went down and <laughs> going, going down. Uh, and I think nothing can fix this. Nothing can fix this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Sajid had to make a terrible joke on camera. <laughs> yeah. That's just the that's, that's just yeah, the way he yeah. rolls. Other, otherwise, device is pretty solid, and yeah. I hope the nothing also resolves the QC issues. Yeah, the Q, QC issues yeah. are also definitely a concern. I was talking about the green tint and the black crash issue. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sajid. Yeah. So overall, I know that I've been very critical of that one crippling update, uh, you know, that came with a lot of bugs. But it is annoying when you're using a phone, right? I mean, when you buy a phone that costs about 32,000 rupees and then you update the phone in hope of the phone getting better, but it actually gets worse. Now, that's definitely a concern. And that's been a concern with a lot of mid-range Android phones. That's the kind of comments that I see in the comments box, uh, you know, below. I see that Poco users, Redmi users, all of these guys, and even OnePlus users to a certain extent have mentioned that there are certain certain features that are sometimes missing, there are updates that are crippling devices. So don't jump to an update is my advice to you guys. Even with the Nothing Phone 1, wait for somebody to you know, face the heat and then sort of take, an, uh, take a call accordingly. That's all we can tell you guys right now. But then yeah, I mean, updates shouldn't cripple devices. You know what, I've actually stuck with the Nothing Phone 1 for the longest time. I had the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra uh, until the Nothing Phone 1 came along, but I have been very lazy to move back to the S22 Ultra. Also because the phone is pretty good, the Nothing Phone 1 is a good experience otherwise and uh, you know there have been other phones that have been come for uh, that have come for testing as well so therefore I didn't feel the need to sort of you know move to a different device because this is good enough the kind of experience that you get with it even for that price is pretty good but yeah I hopefully things get better and and I really do want to know uh, the opinion of current nothing phone one users have you faced similar issues are you happy with your phone are you not happy with your phone let me know in the comment section below i hope this video was useful and uh, helpful uh, if it was don't forget to share it until next time this is ashad signing off keep tracking and stay safe